Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the June 2022 edition of Socialism for All. It's an audiobook and discussion of Where Do Correct Ideas Come From by Mao from 1963. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So this piece is from May 1963, and it's taken from a longer work, The Draft Decision of the Central Committee, of the Chinese Communist Party on certain problems in our present rural work, which was drawn up under the direction of Comrade Mao Zedong. This particular passage was written by Mao himself. Thanks as usual to the Marxists Internet Archive at Marxists.org for hosting this file and thousands of other free Marxist texts. Please go check them out. So let's get into the text. Where do correct ideas come from? Do they drop from the skies? No. Are they innate in the mind? No. They come from social practice, and from it alone. They come from the three kinds of social practice, the struggle for production, the class struggle, and scientific experiment. It is humanity's social being that determines our thinking. Once the correct ideas, characteristic of the advanced class, are grasped by the masses, these ideas turn into a material force which changes society and changes the world. In their social practice, people engage in various kinds of struggle, and gain rich experience, both from our successes and from our failures. Countless phenomena of the objective external world are reflected in a person's brain through our five sense organs, the organs of sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. At first, knowledge is perceptual. The leap to conceptual knowledge, i.e. to ideas, occurs when sufficient perceptual knowledge is accumulated. This is one process in cognition. It is the first stage in the whole process of cognition, the stage leading from objective matter to subjective consciousness, from existence to ideas. Whether or not one's consciousness or ideas, including theories, policies, plans, or measures, do correctly reflect the laws of the objective external world is not yet proved at this stage, in which it is not yet possible to ascertain whether they are correct or not. Then comes the second stage in the process of cognition, the stage leading from consciousness back to matter, from ideas back to existence, in which the knowledge gained in the first stage is applied in social practice to ascertain whether the theories, policies, plans, or measures meet with the anticipated success. Generally speaking, those that succeed are correct, and those that fail are incorrect, and this is especially true of humanity's struggle with nature. In social struggle, the forces representing the advanced class sometimes suffer defeat, not because their ideas are incorrect, but because, in the balance of forces engaged in struggle, they are not as powerful, for the time being, as the forces of reaction. They are therefore temporarily defeated, but they are bound to triumph sooner or later. People's knowledge makes another leap through the test of practice. This leap is more important than the previous one. For it is this leap alone that can prove the correctness or incorrectness of the first leap in cognition, i.e. of the ideas, theories, policies, plans, or measures formulated in the course of reflecting the objective external world. There is no other way of testing truth. Furthermore, the one and only purpose of the proletariat in knowing the world is to change it. Often, correct knowledge can be arrived at only after many repetitions of the process leading from matter to consciousness and then back to matter, that is, leading from practice to knowledge and then back to practice. Such is the Marxist theory of knowledge, the dialectical materialist theory of knowledge. Among our comrades there are many who do not yet understand this theory of knowledge. When asked the sources of their ideas, opinions, policies, methods, plans, and conclusions, eloquent speeches, and long articles, they consider the question strange and cannot answer it, nor do they comprehend that matter can be transformed into consciousness and consciousness into matter, although such leaps are phenomena of everyday life. It is therefore necessary to educate our comrades in the dialectical materialist theory of knowledge, so that they can orient their thinking correctly, become good at investigation and study, and at summing up experience, overcome difficulties, commit fewer mistakes, do their work better, and struggle hard so as to build China into a great and powerful socialist country, and help the broad masses of the oppressed and exploited throughout the world in fulfillment of our great internationalist duty. And that's the end of the audiobook. There's a note here at the end that HTML transcription was done by the Maoist Documentation Project, so thanks to them for that. 
I think that overall this passage is fairly straightforward. Maybe listen to it a couple of times. If you have any questions or comments about it, leave them in the comment area below and either I or someone else can help you out with those. I would just say otherwise that this passage is short and if you're not quite sure what Mao is talking about, but something about this makes sense to you, the next couple of readings that I would suggest are Mao's On Practice, then Mao's On Contradiction, and Stalin's Dialectical and Historical Materialism. All of those are available here at Socialism for All as audiobooks plus discussions, and they are all on the same general topic and probably will help to develop whatever questions you may have about it. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for listening, and thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen.